So I'm just freshly baptized back in 2019. I've known about the church for maybe two months. And a friend of mine from church was telling me about this experience, about their friend, you know, as a husband and wife, they were pregnant with their second, although they were early enough in their pregnancy that they didn't know like what they were having or anything. So they go to the temple to just their monthly temple visit. They weren't going there seeking anything specific. And so the husband and wife, they go in their separate directions and they go and serve and then they meet in the celestial room afterward. And the husband goes to his wife like, I just received the strongest prompting. And that is like, we're having a boy and this is what we need to name him. And the wife is just like, are you joking? Like, I also received that same exact thing that we're having a boy and this is what we name him. And you know, how wild is that, right? That they can be serving separate from each other on their own and receive like the same exact thing, right? I just think that's amazing. So then they have their baby and it's a girl. <laughs> is not a boy and then they have their third baby and it is also a girl and so I'm like just I don't even know if I know that I'm how the spirit works like I'm still so new and I still don't know like anything and I'm hearing this story and I'm like wait what <laughs> what does this mean <laughs> like it it like I like couldn't process it I didn't know what it meant, I don't, and I didn't know anything. And it bugged me because at that moment, the few things that I thought I knew was that the temple was one of the places you can go to and not, you know, to get away from like false ideas and whatever. And, and but what do I know? <laughs> because regardless of what I thought I knew back then, it still didn't change the fact that that, that happened in the temple and now they have three girls and no boys. And so I'm just going to fast forward. I'll come back to this. I'm going to fast forward to 2013. I was engaged, but not married yet. And Ben turns to me, we were in the temple and I have never once given thought or ever vocalized ever moving back to New York. I never wanted to. It wasn't even a thought of mine. And Ben turned to me in the Celeste room and he says, I'm going to bring you home. And when he said it, I felt so good about that. And I just smiled. And since that time, um, over the course of, well, a while, like, I received priesthood blessings saying, like, you're going to move, like, move to New York. And when you move to New York, X, Y, and Z, you know, is going to happen. And so two years into our marriage, we do, we move out of state. But it's to Arizona and not New York. <laughs> uh, what? What? <laughs> Now, I write down every single priesthood blessing I have ever gotten. Since 2009, I have every priesthood blessing in a journal. I know exactly what God promised me and when he said it. So here I am in Arizona, and right after we moved there, you know, totally right, totally inspired move to go to Arizona. And as soon as we get there, not even a few weeks in, I receive another priesthood blessing that says, you know, that's talking about me moving to New York. <laughs> and we do end up moving out of state but it's to Utah. <laughs> now, moving to Utah was definitely right, totally inspired and profound in so many ways. And, you know, every time we heard that, you know, anything about New York in a priesthood blessing or a prompting in the temple, like at this point, I'm up to like seven priesthood blessings. And every time I heard it, we tried, we did, we tried so hard to make it work, but it just didn't. It didn't feel right. Nothing was coming together. You just feel off about it. And so it poses the question of like, wait, what? What about these priesthood blessings that, you know, you're promised and told to do something by the authority of God and then it's not right? It doesn't feel right? It's not working? And all of these other things are happening instead? And I think of Ben turning to me in the temple and I'm like, well, maybe, you know, with passing time, we have these thoughts of, well, maybe he was just being nice. <laughs> maybe it was just a good idea and, and that's all it was. And after six years, years of like this thing in the back of my mind about New York, we go. We move there, you know, out of nowhere, just reading our, you know, just talking, Ben and I just talking on a Sunday night together. 
you know, we get that prompting again and I'm like, okay. <laughs> like, uh, and we work towards it just like we had any other time and except this time it, it, it fell into place. And, you know, when I first moved from New York, I was just, just newly baptized. Me and my dog moved across the country to a place I'd never been where I didn't know anyone, you know, in my, whatever I could fit into a two door car made in the nineties. And I meant to bring my blankets. They somehow didn't make it into the car. And here I am across the country and all I have is my dog and I'm, you know, sleeping on the floor with a towel. And here I am returning, making full circle. And I'm returning with, you know, a husband and two kids and 200 pound dogs and an entire moving truck full of stuff and two published books and all of these accomplishments and achievements and all of these new gifts and talents that I didn't have before and all of these things that I overcame and conquered and became better at. And of course, once I make it to New York, I'm thinking about this family <laughs> from 2009 who was told to have a boy and it never happened. And so I am like, I'm gonna try and look him up online. <laughs> and I need resolution. I finally found after all of these years, years of what I thought was missed blessings and broken promises, I found, you know, it came together. And so I, I wanted to look him up and I found them. And eight years later, and a few kids, a few more girls later, they finally had a boy. And I think of the reality that I know passing time is one of the trickiest things. Passing time is what easily allows doubt and confusion and loss of faith and loss of hope where we start to wonder and question and start to like give up a little bit. But the reality is, is passing time does not dim the truthfulness of his promises to you. Blessings do come. They just don't come in order.